Well, today, um, we will continue our series, second part po ng series natin. Last Sunday, well, series po natin is about family matters. Uh, it's very important, especially nowadays. Ito pong pandemic na to, iba, iba iba po yung na-encounter po natin within the family. Especially the time that we live in right now, uh, even prior to this pandemic, medyo iba po yung view ng karamihan po sa family, no? Uh, wala na din po yung uh, traditional type of family. Uh, lalo, lalo na po, of course, yung biblical type of family. Okay, so last Sunday we talked about uh, uh, how mothers matter. Um, today, uh, talk about marriage. So before we will continue, Paul, let's bow our heads and let's uh, thank the Lord for this day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning once again that you have gathered us together to worship in unity, Lord. This, to worship you in spirit and in truth and in unity, Lord. God, we bless you for our brothers and sisters uh, who are with us, worshiping you, God, giving you thanks and praise, uh, Lord, in their own individual houses right now with their family and loved ones and those who are invited, Lord, to, view, uh, to join us in, in the service today. Lord, during the preaching of your uh, word, we pray that everyone's hearts will be open and will be blessed because it is your word. It is not the word of man, but the word of God. And your word sets people free, Lord. And we, when, once we know the truth, the truth will set us free, especially, Lord, regarding marriage, so God, relationships within the family. So, God, we thank you. And, Lord, um, thank you for the anointing upon your servant as he deliver and share your word. And, Father, for the first time, those who will be with us, for the first time who will hear the gospel, we pray, God, that they will sense and the love of God and their hearts will be open and Lord experience the salvation and the freedom that they can have in Christ Jesus by believing on him as their Savior and Lord. So Lord, we thank you. We give you honor and glory and praise. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So ano man po yung kalagayan po ninyo ngayon? Whether you are married, uh, you're single, about to get married, or widowed, now, the Bible commands every one of us in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, that we need to honor marriages, or we need to honor marriage. Ito po yung institution at sinat po ng Panginoong Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage should be honorable by everyone, or should be honored by everyone. Man, marriage is honorable. Everyone, married or not, na po, should honor Earth's oldest institution in the book of Genesis, in which God ordained marriage po, yung pong kasal. Diba? Pagsasama po ng mag-asawa, babae, lalaki, na po. Uh, in the New Living Translation, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Na po. I think the commitment mainly Secondary point commitment in your honoring one another during when you made your vows during marriage. Marriage that will last, po, is each individual po, who are married need to give honor in marriage. Kailan po focus mo We are committed because we change. Po, your partner in your uh, in the long run, each one will change. And di na po yun ng dating kakilala po niyo. May mga bagay na because we grow. Okay, especially in our walk with God. Uh, there are things that you will discover with one another. There are things that you like before you don't like anymore. Things that you don't like before, then you begin to like that later on in your life as married couples. So, and there are things that uh, you don't like from, with one another and that kind of annoy you and upset you, make you mad, angry, and there's conflict. And, and if you're not committed to, the, to this institution, to the marriage, then it's so easy for you to... Uh, you, just take the exit, the easy way out, okay? And the reason we marry is last is two people are committed to marriage, okay? Because God instituted marriage. If you notice it in uh, this version in the NLT, give honor to marriage and remain faithful, faithful to one another in marriage. Hindi yung kapag na, alimbawa sa, po, sa company, sa pinagtatrabaho nyo, may katrabaho kayo na nakagalit ninyo, nakaaway uh, ninyo, di ba? Na magkukwit na kayo both. <laughs> di ba? You're committed to that company. Yung pong institution na yun. Okay, maybe for a while hindi kayo mag-uusap. 
made you, you, you don't, uh, you try to ignore each other every time you go to work. But that's not, I mean, you quit your job. And then later on, after a week or two, maybe made you counting pansinan na po. Tapos counting hiraman na mga supplies. And then after a month, okay, you either one, bibili ang kanon ng coffee. And then okay na po yung samahan ninyo. Diba? Katampuhan lang. But you didn't quit. Diba? Can you imagine every time there's conflict at work? Kukwit po about this sa atin? You are there not for one another. Mainly for that company. Diba? So the same thing in marriage. Kapag may conflict po dyan, hindi tayo nagbibail out. Because you are committed to what? Marriage. Because marriage is honorable. Diba? Well, of course, sadly, marriage po is no longer honored by anyone in our society. Now, yung pong word na honorable dito, uh, I believe in, 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 the, in Hebrew, I mean Hebrews chapter 13, King James, uh, give honor to marriage, or marriage is honorable. In the Greek, it's tamius. Give it first, main, uh, importance, value. Pinapaka-important dito, okay? So, kailangan bigyan nyo ng pansin nito because it was ordained by God. So, nakakalungkot po, marami po mag ngayon, they are not honoring, or a, a lot of people, uh, not honoring marriage anymore in our society. It is dismissed as irrelevant to many people, dimin po, by many, no po, and, and there are uh, young, uh, I mean, teenagers, uh, singles, no po, delaying marriage, no po. They come together, live together, live together in one house, then they delay marriage. They don't even have a plan to get married. Ayan po yung, uh, we are surrounded ngayon uh, dito po sa panahon natin. Uh, they don't give importance sa, sa marriage. Po. And sometimes they married for the wrong reasons. Huh? Yeah. Marriage is being redefined nowadays. Po. There are so many alternatives uh, about marriage. Po. It's, it's being ridiculed by a lot of people. And dyan po, it's uh, being denounced, discouraged, no? And of course, disrespected. Kapag uh, yung marriage po, uh, if you are traditionally married or yung traditional marriage or biblical marriage, no, it seems like hindi na po masyadong uh, uh, binibigyan po ng importance or hindi natutuwa yung iba, di ba? Okay? So part of the problem is that nobody knows yung pong foundations of marriage, yung basics of marriage, no? So God gives us marriage, and He's expecting the church to stand for it, for marriage, to support marriage uh, in a biblical way. And most people don't know why marriage matters. So as we go through the scriptures, a few scriptures from the Word of God about marriage, at least uh, there are more than five, actually. Uh, but I will be sharing five, the uh, purpose for marriage, why marriage matters. Okay. Let's go to the first one, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone, and I will make a helper who is just right for him. It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Now, in the plan of God, men and women need each other. God created men to need women. Po? A woman, po? a woman to need a man. And this is the way he created it. He designed, he wired it. Po? And, and also when he created, he thought, of, thought about gender, about male and female. Okay? A man and a woman. Not male and male, female, female. It's a man and a woman. And God thought about sexual intercourse and marriage. It has to be under marriage, okay? So God designed, and it was His idea, ito pong uh, marriage, no? And we also, we, we need companions in all different areas for sa life natin. Now, God created Adam in the sixth day, the same day He created and formed the animals from the dust of the ground, the same way the body of Adam was formed the dust of the ground. No, but iba po, uh, si Adam siya lang po medyo iba sa mga animals, okay? Because he was made in the image and likeness of God, like the animals. And, and Adam, 
uh, is the only one who has a spirit. Okay. Uh, animals they have uh, a flesh and body and and soul, but they don't have a spirit. Yeah. But Adam was created in his image and in his likeness. And when he named all the animals, as uh, as you can see, uh, parading the animals in front of Adam. Monajam po yung companionship. No, they have partner uh, each animals. That's the way God created them. But Adam doesn't have any. Okay. So God already knew about that. Now remember, inside Adam, there's already, already Eve. Okay, because the day they were created, uh, created He them means Adam and Eve. In essence, the poor Eve is inside Adam. But then, for Adam to see Eve physically later after seven day, which is uh, the rest day, uh, a Sabbath day, and we don't know uh, when exactly, according to our you know. Um, day of the week, like in calendar, Monday, Tuesday, we don't know, no? But there was a time when God uh, put Adam in a deep sleep. Deep sleep, so mahaba po yun. I don't know, hours to take uh, Eve out of Adam from a rib. Just one rib, no po? Hindi po seven ribs for Adam. Ibig sabihin, hindi pitong babae. Isa, isa lang po tadyang. Okay? So then, then, that's when he, he built and construct Eve from Adam. And then, uh, and the mirac miraculous part of that is that taking the soul and the spirit, po, aside from constructing and building the flesh, the body of a woman. Huh? So, and when God brought uh, Eve to Adam, he said, oh, this is now flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. Po. Now he can see, and now he can experience uh, companionship, po, uh, physically that he can see and live with like as like like he is because <laughs> yung mga animals they have this uh, partner kamukha po nila but adam doesn't have any but although he is complete within himself okay but living on earth in paradise there has there has to be someone like him okay? a woman okay so god brought eve to adam that is the first marriage it was his idea and it was uh, it's something that God instituted, okay, for companionship, because uh, the first thing that marriage, the reason marriage matter, is uh, for the man and woman to be connected, not only physically, but also the part of their soul and spirit. Now I know uh, other people married for the wrong reasons, and most of people they get married because of physical attraction. Okay, kapag mawala na po, they're not attracted anymore. I don't feel like I love you, so I better get divorced. Po. So it's mostly that after what they see with their eyes. Po. And others intellectually or part of their emotion, their soul is part. They are married other people, po, what they can give them, what they can take from that person uh, because they have the same interest and a hobby. Po. But that's very limited still, physically, um, uh, emotionally. That's the only the reason other people are getting married. Iba po, when you, the reason mainly that you are getting married is because of that spiritual condition of each one. Okay? It's like when, when you get married, the reason is you got married. It's because this person loves the Lord, have a relationship with God, going with God. Well, for those of you who are single, no, there may be physical attraction, but the reason you decide to get married is not just for the physical attraction. Okay? Not just for the same interests and hobbies, but because that person loves the Lord as a relationship with God. So you have to start from within. Okay? Wag po yung kalilimutan po, yung pinaka-importante. Now, so we, marriage matters because for the men and women to be connected, to be glued together. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 10, verse 6 and 9. But God made male and female from the beginning of creation. Again, male and female. This explains why a man leaves his father. Okay, the living, the living, living, okay, so living, leaves his father and mother and join to his wife. It's between leaving and cleaving to his wife. And the two are united into one. So he created man and woman to be connected together. 
Okay? Now they are united into one in marriage since they are no longer two but one. Let no one split apart what God has joined together. Because there's a joining of soul and spirit. So wag po tayong mag-interfere. There's going to be a lot of confusion kapag nagkakaroon po ng, ng divorce. Things like that. And as much as God doesn't will, uh, doesn't, uh, it, it wasn't His will na magkakaroon po ng divorce. And of course, uh, the reason uh, in the Bible was permitted because of the hardness of heart. Sabi po sa law ni Moses. No? So ayaw po mag-cooperate yung bawat isa. They don't want it to grow. And remember, uh, marriage is hard work. It's hard work. Okay? So it says here, God made, in the New King James Version, male, God made the male, sorry, and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, shall be united or joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer one. But one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Okay? So in everything you do, kayo po mag-asawa, isa na po kayo ngayon. Yung account ng isa, account ng isa. Okay? So your body, uh, your husband's on your body, uh, your wife on your body. Okay? Be because you're one in the Lord. And it's very powerful. The Bible says a one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. So if married couple are uni really united together in soul and spirit and are growing in the Lord, may explosion for that. You point in a thousand of fusing together. No po? That's infusion, very powerful po. So yung po ang a marriage no, na in institute ng Panginoon. It was very powerful. So according to this uh, uh, verses that we've read, no po, it is the plan of God that a man and woman po, be united together in marriage, it is not just a tradition we can that that just uh, that we can just throw it out. Na po. He invented marriage. Yah po naginvento po ng kasal, pagsasama po ng lalaki at babae, pag-asawa. He invented it for you and for me. When he invented me, when he invented humanity, marriage is the plan of God. Okay, so he invented. Marriage, when he invented you and me, and when he invented humanity. So marriage is the plan of God, right, from the start. It is only between man and a woman. And I know there are other relationships that are so-called relationship, but those aren't marriage, Nepal. It's between man and a woman. And marriage is not temporary. <laughs> like, it's supposed to be permanent. Pang walang hanggan mo yan. So, kayo po nagbabalak na mag-asawa or excited mag-asawa, gusto niyo makapiling yung kasama po ninyo. Hindi gusto niyo makapiling hanggat nararamdaman niyo. Hindi gusto niyo makasama yung mapapangasawa, yung binabalak niyo mapangasawa niyo hanggat nag-work po yung relationship niyo together. Again, marriage is honorable. Okay? Marriage, you need to honor marriage. Honor marriage. Regardless of what you feel, regardless of the disagreements, regardless of your two different backgrounds coming together, you need to be committed to marriage because it's not temporary. Sabi nga nila, no return, no exchange. Or no return. Pag nag kayo, okay? Pang walang, uh, pang uh, habang buhay po yung pag-aasawa. Kaya nga po yung vow ng karamihan, very familiar vow, for better, for worse, till death, to us, do us part, okay? So no one, no one else should separate. It meant to be permanent. It meant to be for life. And I know, hindi po kumisa po mapasok sa isip natin pag bagong kasal tayo or planning to get married. And all we feel the whole time is, oh, forever together. Okay? <laughs> forever together or together forever. Uh, and then after maybe two years, three years, Karoon na po na kayo ng isang anak, pangalawa, pangatlo. Diba? Ang dami na nangyayari sa married. Ang dami na may mga bills. Nawalang trabaho yung isa. Mas malaki yung trabaho ng babae kaysa sa lalaki. Ngayon po, yung lalaki, nasa bahay palagi dahil walang trabaho. Diba? Now, if everyone, if you don't understand what marriage is and what love, how it's supposed to work in your marriage, what will happen? Huh? Madali po tayong uh, 
mag-bail out sa marriage. So, yun po, tinitake natin kagad yung exit. Easy way out. And we think it's an easy way out. No, it brings a lot of confusion. Especially when you have kids. O una po nagsasuffer yung mga bata. Okay, the reason marriage matters is because we were, God created the man and woman to be connected together. Okay. Let's go to the next one. God chose to, uh, God invented marriage na po is so that he can uh, populate na po ito pong uh, human planet natin through marriage. We won't be here kung walang marriage. Kung walang kinasa, uh, kinasal, mag, uh, lalaki, babae, nag-asawa po, di ba? Tapos walang uh, intercourse, uh, wala po tayo dito. Okay. So, yung mga galing po sa kanilang nanay, tatay, na po dahil sa kanilang marriage, tapos naipanganak, yun po yung pupunta sa langit ng mga tumanggap sa Panginoon sa Kristo. Otherwise, wala pong tao sa langit. Kung wala pong kasal. Kaparaanan po ng Panginoon. Hello? Okay. So, He chose to populate yung pong human planet through marriage. Thousands po of years And a lot of people, millions of people, billions of people uh, will come into existence because men and women got married. We're talking about people who will go to heaven to be with the Lord. So he chose for everybody who's going to be in heaven to come into existence through marriage. And that cleaving together, joining, the sinasabi po ng King James Version, it's about sexual intercourse. That's po yung intimate relationship po. Part of the being intimate, the po. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 15, this is a very power, powerful verse, New Living Translation. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? It is, it is God who's doing that, making one, bringing someone for you. In body and spirit, you are His. And what does He want now that you are married? Godly children from your union. So, magkaanak po tayo, tayo mag-aasawa, na po? Para i-raise natin ito pong mga godly children na gagamitin ng Lord and later on makakapiling ang Panginoon. Huh? So guard your heart, remain loyal to the wife of your youth. So if you are married and you don't have kids, don't feel condemned. Na po. Uh, if you accept the Lord, where are you going to heaven? Doesn't mean you're not going to heaven dahil wala po kayong anak. Na po. There are other people naman, uh, you know, maybe the Lord called you to be single, Okay? So, for those of you who are married couple, don't force those people who are single to get married. Okay? Otherwise, kayo pong sisisiin nila. Tignan mo, nangyari ngayon. Uh, my marriage didn't work. Kasi palagi nyo akong pinaparinggan. So, marami po tayo single dito, dito sa FOC. O naghahanap po kayo. <laughs> Sorry, dito po. Okay? So, God will not be disappointed if, you are, if you're married and you never had kids. Okay, others, they adopt kids, they train them, they disciple them. Na po? And these kids, na po, because they were raised in a godly home, tend, uh, you know, they became leaders, they became pastors. Na po? Uh, they, became, they, just, uh, they finished uh, uh, college or universities. Na po? They have a good life. Okay? So don't feel condemned. Okay? So what it's saying here is that we, all, we are all alive because a couple got married. A couple got married. They honor marriage. Po. They remain together. Together. For better, for worse. So, he, God used this marriage, coming together, cleaving and joining, just to populate heaven. Can you imagine heaven? Po, empty, kung wala marriage. Okay? Well, angels of God, God, Father, Father and the Holy Spirit and angels. So if uh, men and women are not getting together through marriage and through that physical intimacy, the heaven will be empty with people coming from earth. Na po. Very basic. Na po. Kaya po tayo mag, uh, mag, uh, magkakaanak. Okay? Now, now also, hindi lang po yung anak ng anak tayo. Okay? Make sure you, you'll be able to raise your kids. Okay? So, uh, gamitin naman natin common sense po. You, I mean, nagihirap na po tayo, tapos anak pa tayo ng anak. And other people will end up na po, raising your kids. So, they won't have a good future. What happened? Because napapabayaan po sila. Okay? All the marriage was designed also to have, to have kids. It doesn't mean just keep Getting, having kids. 
or other people just kept ha having kids po dito sa Manitoba kasi uh, at least we have support, di ba? Um, yung mga parents in raising up their kids. So enough support for pambili ng gatas, pambili ng diaper, pambili ng baby food. No, it's something that si Arvin and Marta na experience na nila ngayon. Ah, wala pa, hindi pa dumarating. Okay, ina-apply yan pa lang siguro. Okay, number three. God designed marriage, instituted it no, for the perfection of our character. Wow, if you want to grow in character, would I say get married? <laughs> because it's in relationships that we learn to be unselfish and to be loving. Okay, now prior po sa having kids, magasawa pa lang kayo in the long run, no? And then about building your character. Okay? Can you imagine two different backgrounds? Family backgrounds? Iba po sa atin, iba yung pinanggalingan po natin, ibang ibang country po tayo, di ba? Hindi uh, tayo magkakulay, magkaugali, and coming together. So imagine po how each one, Lord, uh, each one of those people, I mean in marriage, build each one's character. Yeah. Wow. And no relationship has a greater impact on your life than marriage. Kapag may, uh, may asawa po tayo, married tayo, alam po ninyo yung maturity at saka yung purpose of life. Uh, yung purpose natin sa buhay, patuloy magkukro yan po. Um, and you will realize later on it's not all about you. Remember, you have a covenant to each other. Especially, I mean, in the, front, uh, in the eyes of God, you made a covenant. Everything you have is hers. Everything she has is hers. No? <laughs> everything, she ha everything you have is hers. <laughs> everything she has is yours, okay? <laughs> It's up to you. Everything she has is hers. Everything you have is hers. Okay. So, ganun po kayo ka-unselfish. That's how much you love your, your partner. Okay. So, sabi nga nila, ito yung laboratory, yung, pong, yung marriage of learning how to love, exhibit your love, demonstrating love. Na po. Uh, you know, love is the most important thing in life. It's something that we need to aim, aim in life. No? Because God that we're serving is a God of love. And he wants you and I to become like him. And, and in a married couple, that's the best place to demonstrate for your love. Okay? I know sometimes you just want to kill one another, but you have to love. No? You've been through that. No? And it's easy to bail out when you're going through tough times in marriage. But as you submit and grow and remain, be patient. And remember, you have the characteristics of love in your spirit. First Corinthians 13, love is patient. Love is very patient, very kind. Love does not jealous. Okay? So you have that in you. And in marriage, in relationships where those, uh, the fruit of the spirit of love will be, get developed. Provided that you don't quit and you bail out and take the easy way out in relationship when... It's tough. And usually the tougher you are going through in a relationship, and when you apply the word, the closer the restoration or the closer the better your relationship will become. Okay, I have seen a uh, married couple, na po, I mean, to the point, ayo ko na, pastor. Gusto ko na yung yung asawa ko. And sometimes you can't say anything to them. I mean, the way they're going through, they're suffering, they're not enjoying life, and sometimes you wanted to tell them, go ahead. Huh? And besides, I don't want to hear you coming to me and get and asking me about my advice. Diba? But you can't say anything. Uh, although you wanted to tell that person, stick to your marriage. When the going gets tough. And the more it gets tougher, and when you remain trustful, the closer you are. It's a breakthrough. Okay? The closer you are. Kapag matindi po kasi, siyempre, the enemy wants you to give up. Okay? But when you decide to stick, and then later on makikita po na, oh, thank God I stick to my marriage. 
And now, Pastor, ito po yung lagay namin ngayon. Oo, nakita niyo naman yung selfie namin ngayon. Ito po, hindi na fake to, Pastor. Totoo na to. Okay, hindi, hindi maraming takes to. Isang take lang to. Ayan, selfie. Okay, totoo yung mga smile na yan. And yung after nung selfie yan, ilang takes, tapos, uh, ayan, nagbabangayan na naman kami. No, bago yung takes na yan, loving kami. After na loving pa rin kami, Pastor. Hindi ka gaya ng mga ibang pinopost yan. Matagal pong ina, inareglo yung mga ibang mga selfie dyan. Okay? Huwag po ninyong paniwalaan lahat po ng selfie ng family dyan. Eh, okay lahat yung marriage nila. Actually, nandyan na po, nakafile na yung divorce ng iba. Huh? But you know, the good thing about is that uh, I believe the reason they posted that, either one of them, because they want to work out their marriage. But somehow, the other person doesn't want to. Okay? No, we're trying my best to keep this marriage, to get to save this marriage. No, that's why I'm posting this. Because I don't want to. I might have a few days at wala na to. Okay? So I believe maybe other uh, pictures, uh, social media, the reason you're posting that. Because you're about to give up. But every time you look at that picture, it just pushes you to, to stick and to believe God na magiging better po yung lahat. No? Okay, where are we? We're number three. Okay, God uh, instituted marriage so that our character will be developed. Okay, it's in relationships that we learn to be unselfish and to be loving. He wants you to learn love or demonstrate, exhibit the, your love to develop that you have received from God in your spirit. And we need to love and learn to be unselfish in marriage. And marriage is a lifelong course in learning to be unselfish because once you get married, you know, you, cannot lo you can no longer think about your own self. You're always thinking about the other person. You start thinking about we, us, not just me. Okay? So number one tool that God uses in your life to, be, to build Christ's character is if you are married, is your spouse. Okay? Every time your spouse correct you, yung pong what he or she thinks na hindi tama. The way you put the toilet paper. The way you use your toothbrush or tooth, toothpaste. Or the way you clean, do wash the dishes and everything. Can you imagine every day? Mga asawa po, kung minsan bigyan nyo naman ng break yung asawa po ninyo na hindi correct ng correct. Okay? <laughs> hindi yung every time na hindi nagawa yung tama in a way that you wanted, the way you prefer it, done, yung kanin, hindi palagi nyo siya sermonan, hindi ko correct. Apo, sabihin ng asawa, ang bihira ang buhay ito. Ikaw na magsahing sa susunod. Yun po yung nangyayari, no? Minsan. See, but, but if you are growing, both of you, I know it's hard to demonstrate yung love, yung Understanding, no? And self-control. Pang isang daan na to eh. I'm still in control. No? I'm still being patient. Sasakalin na kita. <laughs> Sa lo, alam po ba ninyo, in your mind, your heart, you, sinakal nyo na po yung asawa nyo, pinatal nyo, pinatay nyo na asawa nyo, di ba? Yung iba nyo, sa totoo lang po, other than, and you think, kapag sinabi nyo lang, doon kayo nagiging masama, dito pa lang po, Okay. Yeah, a lot of times we are committing sin against our spouse. Diba? Pagod na pagod ka na, tapos eh, honey, bakit timpla mo naman ng kape? Huh? Or honey, pumunta ka naman sa McDonald's, nakakrib ako ng french fries. Pagod na pagod ka, no? And then sa isip mo, Galit ka na sa mundo. Pati dun sa magbibigay sa'yo sa drive-thru. Huh? See, but those are opportunities for your character to be shaped and developed. Provided that you are thinking about your relationship with God, yung spiritual uh, growth ninyo, no? If you're really concerned and uh, on the lookout po kayo at seeing things are opportunity, everything that is happening around you and in your marriage, but it's just, oh, wow, this is an opportunity. Well, I, wow, yung love ko patuloy ma-develop dito. Yung self-control. And of course, not, every, not all of us believers are like that. 
Uh, only when you are led by the Spirit that you are aware, you know, and you get to think and consider, okay, maybe the Lord wanted to teach me something from this. Only when you are led by the Spirit that you get to think about that. That way, diba? But, but you don't, if you don't care about your spiritual growth, sino ba nang mag-isip din? I mean, express nyo na lang emotion nyo. Galit kayo, galit kayo. Diba? Kung paano tinapon sa drive-thru yung, yung supo, tapon nyo sa asawa nyo pagdating nyo sa bahay. O, ito na. <laughs> Paala sa buhay mo. Okay? Well, you don't care about your life, about your character. Uh, you don't care if it pleases God or not. Okay? Every one of us fails. No one is perfect. Okay? And don't ever look at me as if, uh, oh, buti pa si pastor. Buti pa si pastor. Uh, sila mag-asawa, oh, ako, made in heaven. No? Well, pare-pareho po tayo. Okay? Ito, nakita nyo may band-aid tong, ano ko, yung thumb ko. Ito po na, sabi sa kapapangan, nagili. I cut it na po. Ito po. Eh, hindi dahil sa may ginawa yung asawa ko sa akin. Okay? Dahil may ginagawa ko sa pagmamahal ko sa pamilya ko. Okay? Because I fed them tons of sushi. Hindi kayo pwedeng imbitahan eh. No? Hey. Okay, so, you know, when you are married, um, once you are married, okay, and then you started going through tough times, and the reason for that is for your marriage to get better, more better and better. It doesn't get better when everything is rosy and everything is good. And you think it's better. Oh, I hope we can maintain this kind of relationship. Walang awayan. No. Kailangan i-reveal kung ano po yung mga, kung talaga sino tayo, kung ano yung mga problema sa buhay natin. The way we act, the way we do with one another, di ba? As long as we are together. Why? To make you better. Okay? Minsan natatakot po tayo, we're trying to avoid, avoid that. But that's the only way we get better. And the reason we're connected to the local church and small groups with our brothers and sisters, no, you don't try to avoid everyone. Well, in that, in that kind of relationship, you get to know each other. Okay? And in getting to know each other, you get better if you cooperate with what God's doing. Let's go to number four. Now, marriage is the fundamental building block of every uh, church, of every uh, nation, society, culture. If you know anything about History, you know, that uh, that's where marriages or where marriages are strong. History, no po. Cultures and nations are strong. Kapag maganda po yung samahan ng mag-asawa, of course, maganda po yung impact sa society, di ba? And the reason the, the nation is becoming really bad, it started from families. Well, you're not raising, your relationship is not good. And then how can your, your kids become good, have a good impact you know, to the society? So as a result, you know, poor relationship and poor parenting, you know, and every married couple, society will turn out to be bad. And we think it's good? No. A lot of bad things really happening within our society. Even here in Canada, hindi lang po sa ibang... Uh, lugar, no? Okay. Whenever the marriages and families are weak, yung pong cultures, yung nations, will start to decline. It's very obvious po sa ibang mga nations, no po, where it is headed. Even Canada included. Okay. And I think it's getting better. Although a lot of Christians are more praying about, you know, traditional family, biblical family, marriage based on the Bible, Nepo, and still a lot of people Nepo, doing all kinds of things, unrighteous things, Nepo, uh, it's not God, God's way of doing things. So it's not uh, actually going to a good di direction right now when it, terms, uh, when it comes to families here in Canada. Because a lot of people, they don't value marriage, they don't value family. We value self, the marriage. And people made individualism an idol. 
in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, it says, Godliness makes a nation great. Wow. Righteousness or right living makes a nation great. But sin is a disgrace to any people. Sin is a dis disgrace. So, yan po, napakalinaw. Godliness makes a nation great. We wanted this nation to be great. Godliness has to come from God's principles about marriage, about family. About. Let's go to number five. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 30. The, for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy, not talking about church, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love, as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows loves for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it. And just as Christ cares for the church, and we are members of his body. So makikita po natin dito. Actually, yung marriage po is a metaphor. Na po. It's a symbol. It's a walking, living object lesson po of how much God loves us. And we can see it here in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. And how we are to be in relationship with God. Marriage is a model. It's a model of a spiritual truth. Marriage is a, is a type of the church of Jesus and the church, the bride and the groom. The groom is the, it's Jesus and the bride is the church. Okay? So no other relationships on planet Earth, including your parent-child relationship, can adequately illustrate our union with Christ the way a marriage between a man and a woman does. Ito po yung strongest reason why marriage cannot be redefined. It is the strongest reason why marriage cannot be redefined. This is the strongest reason why it must be protected at all costs because we are the body of Christ. Kaya po tayo mga Christians, no po, kailangan po maging magandang ilaw o halimbawa po yung relationship natin. Kaso sa panahon po ngayon, umisan yung mga non-Christians, kumisan mas maganda po yung relationship nila mag-asawa kaysa mga ibang Kristiyano. Do you know what? That because sin came before the fall of man. But God, I mean, okay, marriage was instituted before the fall of man. So, Everyone, every married couple can experience a good marriage relationship. Solomon said that uh, uh, enjoy the, your wife in your youth under the sun. I don't know if that's exactly the verse. In other words, the closest heaven that you can experience here on earth is having a Good marriage, whether you're a Christian or not. I mean, if you are non-Christian, sorry. I want to be clear on this one. You can experience, as it is close to heaven, if you have a good marriage. Okay? Provided that you work for it. Because husband and wife who are, who are non-believers, they have great, great, great marriage because they work hard for it. Compare po sa ibang mag-asawa na Christiano. Okay. I forgot the verse in, uh, I believe, Ecclesiastes, that you can ma enjoy marriage no po, under the sun, provided that you work for it, because marriage is hard work. Okay. So whether you are a believer or not. So nowadays, no po, knowing that God instituted marriage and marriage needs to be honored, we need to protect it. We need to set an example po. Hindi po yung kapag nagkakaroon ng matinding problema, nag-iiwanan na po tayo. Okay? Hindi po dinesign yung marriage na problem-free. Okay? Of course, may mga problema. Okay? Totally magkaiba po yung bawat isa. 
we're totally different. A man and a woman. Yun na magkaiba kayo eh. A man and a woman. Pa family Gonzales, tsaka Kasilan, magkaiba na nga eh, last name eh. Yung iba, magkaiba pang kulay. Magkaibang background. No? So, magkakaroon ng conflict later on. No? At every time nagkaroon ng conflict, iniwalay natin ang bawat isa. Eh, ano pang testimony mangyari? Remember, we are God's ambassadors. Okay? As a married couple, we need to set an example. People has to say, actually, unbelievers need to envy yung kind of relationship we have with our spouse. Oh, sana ganun yung relationship namin. Okay, not, not to have a perfect relationship. The way you work out things, the way you remain together in spite of, no, you're honoring po yung marriage. Di ba kailangan kainggitan po yung relationship ng mag-asawang born-again believer? Okay. You need to be a witness to the world. Okay. You, I believe yun po ang main reason uh, God also designed or instituted marriage. Okay? Now remember, marriage is a metaphor. Well, there will come a day that we will be presented without spot or wrinkle the church to Jesus Christ at His coming. And that's why He's preparing His, his, he's preparing his church well, to the point of someday we'll be presented, we'll get married to Jesus, who is our bridegroom. So marriage is a tithe of the bride of Christ. Kaya ganun po, kaya bigyan natin ng halaga po itong marriage na to. Okay? It doesn't matter what other people think about marriage. It doesn't matter what the public opinion says about marriage. Or it doesn't matter what's fully politically correct or incorrect. What really matters is what God says. He's the only one who invented marriage. And that's the reason marriage matter to God. That's why marriage matters. Because God designed it and invented it. And if God designed marriage, it's going to be a good marriage. But it's not going to be a problem, problem-free marriage. Okay? We are living in a fallen world. But as we cooperate with God, when we walk in the Spirit... When we look at each other the way God sees, look at us, then we get to stay in love, stay in marriage until death will part us. So I encourage those couple, married couples, to grow in your relationship with God and to cooperate and walk in the Spirit. Grow in the Word. For as you grow in the Word together, go, you get to understand each other. You get to look at each other the way, the way God looks at you. You get to look at each other in their spirit of who, we are re who really they are. Well, as a born-again believer, that they are new creature, that they have the righteousness of God, that they have the love of God, they have patience, they have kindness. If that's how we look at each other, then, well, till that do us part. I mean, we will remain married. That's how we honor marriage. But we are committed to marriage, to that institution, instituted by God. And a lot of people, a lot of believers are new. But maski po hindi sila ganun ka-close, ka-sweet, they stayed married. They stayed married until na either one of them magpaalam. So that's what I would like to communicate to you and, and encourage you. So don't bail out. Don't take the easy way out. Actually, the easy way out, you think that it's easy, it's the hard way. It's the hard way. It's not a way out. It will give you a lot of problems and headaches, and if you have kids, bring a lot of confusion. But the easy way out is not what you think is the easy way out. Not taking the easy way out is a proper thing. So don't just stick in a marriage. But trust God that everything will work out well, between the two of you. Okay, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for every, I thank you, Lord, for every married couples. Lord, uh, when, when two people planning and thinking about getting married, 
It seems like they are not envisioning or seeing in the future that there will be problems, there will be conflicts, there will be disagreement, that they, can, that they will hurt one another. It seems like that what they see, what they think, or what, it's just everything is okay. Everything is perfect. But then later on, Lord Jesus, once married, living together for years, having kids, and now they started to realize, well, I thought marriage is, is like this. This is not how I envision it. Lord Jesus, in any relationship, because we are being with other people who are imperfect like as we are, we are not perfect, so there, there will be conflict. But thank you, Lord. There is a purpose in relationships. One of that, Lord, is for us, for our character to be developed, for us to grow. In every married couple, you want each one to be better. And as each one be better, both of them gets better. It's when everyone, every married couple, go through tough times, Lord, difficult times, and learn how to trust in you and grow while they're going through tough times. That's what their marriage get better. And that's when they get to enjoy one another. And that's when they get to the next level of their relationship. So, Lord, I pray for every married couple, and I know every one of us, Lord, married couple, are going through tough times and some are really other couples probably about or feel like giving up thinking that there is no hope for this marriage and i pray that they will be encouraged lord hold on and stay and stick to their marriage and trust in you and when they feel about when they feel that uh, like if they wanted to give up throw in the towel surrender take the easy way out that they will hold on the more to your word and continue to trust in you Lord God because the more they hold on through difficult times the closer they are to a breakthrough in their relationship and thank you Lord for other marriages that got restored and now Lord they are enjoying their relationship not that they don't have any more problem but they passed the test and they went into the next level and they are becoming a good testimony to their friends their relatives and loved ones co-workers and telling these people how you worked out their marriage how you bless and miraculously save their marriage Lord so God we thank you and I pray oh God Every single married couple, divorced, separated, we start honoring marriage, not demean it, ridicule it, just start honoring it because it was God's idea. You invented it, Lord. If you invented it, it's good. It's not a burden. It's not something that we need to hate. It's something that we need to embrace because you created it. We thank you. We honor you for the day. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you who don't have any relationship with God, I would like to encourage you to say this prayer, a short prayer after me. You need God in your marriage. You tried very hard and you just kept failing, why don't you come to God since he's the one who invented it and he will give you wisdom and power and ability to stay in your relationship together as married couple. So why don't you invite him in your life and, and believe and accept him as your Lord and Savior. So follow this short prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I admit that I have sinned. I cannot save myself. I cannot fix my life, even forgive myself, fix this marriage even, Lord. Apart from you, I can do nothing. Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you after the third day you rose again from the dead. 
Today I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change me from now on. Give me eternal life. I repent. I'm turning away from sin and turning to you. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you will empower me. I ask you to empower me with the Holy Spirit so that I can live a life pleasing to you. And God, I entrust to you my marriage right now. You're the only one who can fix it. I give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po for joining us today. And hopefully, napagpahala po kayo. And I would like to invite you again next Sunday na po, sa pagpapatuloy po ng series natin, Family Matters. Okay? If it matters to God, it has to matter to us. Na po. So, it's very important na po. So, uh, see you po. Enjoy your uh, day today. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy your week. God bless you all. God keeps you protected. Po. I plead uh, the blood of Jesus over you. Uh, not only the doorboards of, of your houses, but also with your physical body. And I speak divine health and blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. <laughs>